Hi everyone, my name is Alistair and today I'm going to introduce Redflow, which is a new forecasting model on networks of time series. This work is done in collaboration with Alex Matthews, Jeng Sun Ong and Le Xing Xie at the Computation Media Lab at the Australian National University. So why do we care about networks of time series? Let me talk about one use case using the YouTube Music Recognition Network, where a node is a music video with daily view information and an edge exists between two videos if one is on the recommendation sidebar of another. Here, for example, there will be a link from the song Hello to the song Someone Like You. More schematically, we can draw the network of vid music videos like this. This is a directed graph and the full network contains about 60,000 music videos. And again, each node is associated with a time series. One use case came from a prior work in our research group done by Sichi Wu and others, where we consider the event marked with a red vertical line. This was when Adele released her new song Hello back in 2015. And an interesting question is, how did the release of this new song affect the popularity of Adele's other songs and also the popularity of other artists? More generally, how does YouTube's music recommendation network affect the decision of a random viewer? Answering this question will help content providers optimize their ad revenue. Another example of a network of time series is the Wikipedia hyperlink network. Here, knowing how a search in traffic on one page will spread to other pages will allow server administrators improve their load balancing strategies. Networks of time series also occur naturally in the wild. If we have networks of rivers and streams, how can we use the topology of the network to impute missing values of sensor measurements? So those are the motivations for why we should care about networks of time series. Now I will go through the existing literature, then introduce the Redfield model, describe the results, and finally end with a demo. When we study networks of time series, there are three dimensions that we need to consider. The first is that we need a way to model the time series inside each node. And then we need to be able to represent the graph structure that sits on top of these time series. And finally, nodes and edges in our graph can appear and disappear over time. For example, a video might get recommended on one day, but not on another day. So we need to represent um, dynamic networks of time series. And looking at the existing literature, the first thing to note is that time series forecasting itself is a well-established task. ARIMA is usually the standard statistical baseline that everyone is trying to compare against. More recently, a fully neural forecasting model called NBEATS was able to perform extremely well in benchmark datasets. However, these models cannot be easily applied when you have the additional graph structure. When it comes to networks of time series, two approaches have been proposed. One of them is a regression model called ARNET, where the prediction is simply a weighted sum of past observations and also of the neighboring nodes' current observations. The coefficients in ARNET can be concretely interpreted as a proportion of traffic flowing from one node to another node. The other approach is a neural model, TGCN, where we add a graph neural network inside every RNN cell. Now, the problem with both ARNET and TGCN is that they do not work with dynamic graphs, where edges can appear and disappear over time, and they do not scale well to very large graphs. TGCN, for example, was tested only on a graph of a few hundred nodes, while ARNET was tested on a graph of 60,000 nodes. And there are algorithms that work with dynamic graphs, such as Evolve GCN and Direct, but these models are designed for link prediction and classification tasks, not for time series forecasting. So this leads to our first contribution of the paper. We propose Redflow, an end-to-end -end model that can scale to dynamic networks containing hundreds of thousands of time series. And to summarize our contributions, the first is a new state-of-the-art forecasting model over large networks of time series. The predictions of Redflow are interpretable, allowing us to break the forecast into smaller parts and allowing us to explain the influence between nodes. Redflow is able to achieve state react results in four real-world datasets in both imputation and forecasting tasks. And our final contribution comes in the form of a new benchmark dataset. We curated wiki traffic, which contains 366,000 nodes and 22 million dynamic edges spanning over five years. And this is at least an order of magnitude bigger than previous datasets. Okay, so let's make the prediction task a bit more precise. When we make predictions on node I, the output of the model are the observations in future time steps of this node. 
And to make these predictions, we will feed two sets of input into the model. The first set of inputs are the historical observations of node i, and the second set of inputs are the observations from the neighbors of node i. To allow red flow to have a modular design, we enforce a constraint where the output of the model is simply the sum of two components, the prediction contribution from the recurrent component and the prediction contribution from the flow aggregation component. Now, the recurrent component is simply a time series forecasting model. It ignores the network structure and simply makes the prediction based on the historical observation of a particular node. In contrast, you can think of the flow aggregation component as your favorite neural graph network. This component aggregates the influence from neighboring nodes. Let us now zoom inside the recurrent component. So we're going to use the LSTM model to encode the time series. At the same time, we also want to be able to decompose our time series predictions into simpler parts. For example, one part might capture the trend, while another part might capture the seasonality. To do this, for each layer of the LSTM, we're going to feed the hidden state of the LSTM cell through a feed-forward layer to obtain what we call the forecast vector. And the final prediction from the recurrent component will simply be the sum of the forecast vectors across all layers, and then project it down to the right number of dimensions. Furthermore, we will use a concept called residual fitting. This idea might be familiar if you have seen gradient boosting before. Usually, the input to an LSTM layer is simply the output from the previous layer. However, in red flow, the input to an LSTM layer is going to be the input from the previous layer minus the so-called backcast vector. Intuitively, under this design, we can interpret the backcast vector as capturing the signals that are explained by the current layer. And when we subtract this away, the next LCM layer only needs to worry about explaining the residual signals. Graphically, we can represent the summation of the forecast vectors like this. And in the results section, we will show that the forecast vectors from different layers do indeed capture different trends and seasonality. And finally, in order to aggregate information from different nodes in the graph, we need a way to have an embedding for each node at each time step. This embedding should be able to capture information about the whole time series up until a particular time step. And to do this, we add another fork from the LSTM cell to generate what we call the node vector. And the embedding of node i at time step t is simply the sum of the node vectors across all layers. OK, so in our network, each node will have an embedding. The next question is, how can we aggregate information from the neighbors around the so-called eco node, here represented by the orange node? In our paper, we try four different approaches. The first approach is a simple mean pooling, where we just take the average of the node embeddings of all the neighbors and then add it to the embedding of the eco node. Now, focusing on the second equation, if we have the extra linear projections, the two W matrices here, then we will obtain the graph sage approach, the second method of aggregation that we tried. And now, if we focus on the first equation, you might wonder, what if instead of taking an average, we take a weighted average of the neighbors? If we do that, we would arrive at our final two approaches using either graph attention network or using multi-head attention. The difference between these two methods mainly comes down to how we compute the weights, which are also called the attention scores. In graph attention network, you can catenate the embeddings of two neighbors and then feed it through a feed-forward layer, whereas in multi-head attention, these attention scores come from the dot product between the embeddings of two neighbors. So to summarize, there are four methods of aggregation that we tested, mean pooling, graph sage, graph attention network, and multi-head attention. But in order to make these aggregation methods scale well to nodes with a large degree, we add an extra step where instead of aggregating across all neighbors of a node, we just sample a small number of neighbors and we put more weight on neighbors that are more popular. In addition, we store the graph in HDF5 format so that for each training step, we only need to load a batch of nodes on demand from disk. And this completes an overview of the RadFlow architecture. So now let's go back to the task definition. In this paper, we consider two different evaluation settings, which changes what goes inside the second term of our model. In the first setting, which we call the forecast setting, we first have to run a forecasting model on the neighboring nodes, and then we aggregate information of these neighbors. This setting is useful when we want to actually forecast the future. In the second setting, which we call the imputation setting, we run the node aggregation on the ground truth observations of the neighbors 
during the forecast period. These are the dark blue regions in the diagram. This setting is useful when we would like to fill in missing values or to study how influence propagates through a network. So our paper is the first to clearly define these two tasks, whereas previous works implicitly picked one task and evaluated on it without having a clear definition. Let's now have a look at the results. All of the results here are reported using a metric called SMAPE, Symmetric Mean Absolute Percentage Error. This metric is bounded between 0 and 200, and a lower number is better. The first observation is that models where we share the same weights across all time series perform better than models that use a different set of parameters for each time series. This captures the intuition that weight sharing allows us to learn common patterns across multiple time series. In addition, both NBEATS and our RATFLOW model use residual fitting where we can break the time series predictions into smaller parts, and having residual fittings also improves the performance. Finally, our RATFLOW model makes use of the recurrent structure of the LSDM, which allows us to outperform NBEATS, the previous state of the art in time series modeling. Intuitively, the recurrent structure allows us to better model the ordering of the time series. Moving on to experiments with network information, the key result here is that on Bevo Music, we were able to achieve a SMAPE score that is 19% better than the state-of-the-art IRNet model. In fact, even our RATFLOW model without network information from the previous slide was able to beat IRNet. This shows that sometimes having the right model outweighs having more information. Recall that our forecast is a sum of the forecast from uh, multiple LSTM layers. This figure shows the average forecast contribution from each of the eight LSTM layers over the test period of the wiki traffic dataset. Here we can see that different layers capture different seasonal and trend patterns. This next figure plots the forecast contribution from the neighbors of a node against the average daily view count of that node. An interesting observation is that the more popular a node is, the less important the network effect becomes when it comes to making predictions. And finally, we find that rat flow is robust to missing views and missing edges. In this evaluation, we delete data points inside each time series at random and see how that affects the SMAPE metric. As we move to the right on the x-axis here, um, we delete more data points. And as we delete more data points, the models with network information, th those are the models with one and two hops, they decay at a much slower rate than the model without network information. Let me now show you a quick demo to visualize the flow of influence in the Wikipedia network of time series. This work is published separately as a demo paper in Wisdom 2021. Here we can see the ego network around the Wikipedia page for Kylo Ren, who is the main character in Star Wars. In the movie, Kylo Ren is played by the actor Edmund Driver over here. Here the edges represent the hyperlinks between the pages, and the thickness of an edge is determined by the attention score from our red flow model. The thicker an edge is, the more attention the model pays to the neighbor when predicting the views of the ego node. If we now focus on the pair Adam Driver and Kylo Ren, we can see that from the top panel, the two time series have correlated peaks, which actually coincides with the release of new Star Wars movies. In addition, looking at the attention scores or the thickness of the edges, we can infer that more traffic is flowing from Kylo Ren to Adam Driver than the other way around. So in summary, we propose a new state of that forecasting model over a network of time series. We use a stack of RNNs to decompose the time series into seasonal and trend effects. We use multi-head attention to aggregate and explain the influence between nodes. We also curate wiki traffic, which is the largest dynamic network of time series to date. So please check out our code, our pre-trained models, and our data on our GitHub repo. And also please check out the demo at attentionflow.ml. Thanks.